Welcome back to Nickel City X Wing, everybody. This is round four. And look, it's two different factions. We did We've got Resistance versus the Galactic Republic. It's Matlock versus John G. And joining me is the proprietor of the tournament, the tournament organizer and director. It's Call of Duty, everybody. Greg, I am thrilled to be here. We've had a great tournament so far today. And right now, here we have an OG nickel city buffalo matchup between john and matt these two have locked dice on more occasions than they can count this should be a great match it should also be noted that john can only count up to seven so they've locked uh dice eight times but it's neither here nor there should be fun and this is actually a big match carl because if john wins he's in. he's in the cut okay. matlock can play spoiler now that is taking into account my little flub with the MOV earlier. Uh, I believe so. I believe all three and ones make the cut. Am I wrong? Okay. I thought we said that yeah. earlier. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. It's, gonna, it's, 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 it's a rough. playing game. It's a playing game. We're just going to say it's a playing game. It's a playing game. It's a playing game. Yeah, sure. We'll, <laughs> we'll add the drama. Uh, but yeah, we've had a, a really great tournament today. We've had some fun matchups. Um, I want to apologize to the viewing audience that I wasn't able to get Greg the lists earlier. So there has been um, been a lot of mirror mirror matchups. Oh, they don't care. Fan. We joke, uh, but but no one cares. <laughs> well, I want to make sure they know that we're trying to give them the best product possible. Um, and Greg, thanks so much to you for streaming this. Uh, we are, looks like we're getting ready underway here. Looks like we're ready to go. And time has started. Let me open up betting. So Carl, you've played Matlock, you've played John, you know their styles. I've played John way more than I've played Matlock. Matlock always comes with the unconventional. What do you got to look out for when you're playing a guy like Matlock who's just thinking so far outside the box? Matlock is indeed the mad scientist of our local community. Um, he will always think of something with either a combination of ships or upgrades that you wouldn't necessarily think of. And he's extremely creative in that respect. Um, therein, though, is a little bit where his weakness lies in that once you figure out the trick in his squad, it can be easy to counter it, Depend uh, again, depending on what the trick is. So it's, it's unexpected tech, uh, but today he's just going for straight <clears throat> bombing efficiency. We've got five Republic Y-Wings, all with the incredibly cheap concussion bombs. So these A-Wings don't want anything to do with those concussion bombs. Now, with John, when John puts a list on the board, uh, you can be rest assured that he knows how that list works. And he knows what that list should be doing uh, John is a specialist when it comes to resistance and rebel ships, and he is extremely solid in his gameplay. Um, so I think we're in for a great match here. These two players very familiar with each other. They're going to know each other's tendencies, and we've got two really interesting lists, so I think we're in for a great match. I agree. And John, in my opinion, is one of one of our better players. Uh, I've played him a lot, and uh, he beats me a lot. So it's been... Yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to this match to see kind of what happens here. Yeah, John is a fantastic player. I've always said that, you know, if you, if you beat John, you, you kind of keep the puck because it doesn't happen that often. If there's one weakness to John's game is that he is um, very efficient and very safe with his ships. So a lot of times, if you can think a little bit outside the box, do maybe something unpredicted, you can catch him off guard, which can punish him a bit. But typically, he's going to be on point with what he wants to do. All right, and here we see Finch all the way at the bottom of the board, kind of out of this fight. It's going to take him a long time to get over there. So, I think John is going to want 
Matlock to chase him because he's got those rear arcs with those A-wings and he does not want to get behind those A-wings. He doesn't want to deal with that monster dump of bombs. Yeah, I got you. So you think we're probably going to see him bail out to the left and have the Y-wings come towards him instead of getting his ships back over. Right. Speaking of, let's go down the list. <laughs> Starting with Matlock and the Republic, we've got Goji with a dorsal turret, R4 Astrum, concussion bombs, and delayed fuses. Then we've got R2-D2 with dorsal turret, wolf pack, concussion bombs, and delayed fuses. And then we've got a red squadron bomber with a dorsal turret, R4 Astromech, concussion bombs, and delayed fuses, where have I heard that before? And two other red squadron bombers with a dorsal turret, R4 Astromech, concussion bombs, and angled deflectors. I have never actually seen angled deflectors used in a game. So angled deflectors is an upgrade that when it came out, I'm surprised it didn't see more play with ships that can have an ability to take multiple actions. Ships like possibly Poe or Darth Vader, things like that. Uh, because you gotta figure on, on a ship like that, a reinforce would be a good thing. Granted, you gotta burn an action for it and you're taking one less shield for it. Uh, but again, this is one of those things where Matlock thinks something outside of the box and he puts it in his list and you don't see it coming until it's gonna punish you. He does have blue and brown kind of out front. So those angled deflector ships are the ones that are like most prominent and available for being attacked. Right. So I think we also, before we get really into the engagement here, we also need to talk about uh, the legend and lore of the Nickel City X-Wing community, which is Matlock's dice. <laughs> uh, Matlock really ticked someone with some sort of supernatural powers off so bad at some point. I don't know what he did, Greg, but, you know, people always say, well, my dice, my dice, my dice. Trust me, Matlock has cursed dice. Matlock can fly perfectly, do everything he needs to do, and just his dice will, will not help him at all. So we'll see how much that comes into play in this match here has that has that transferred over to uh digital yes yes it has we we had kind of hoped that he would have left that in the realm of the physical but it has followed him into <clears throat> the digital world well, fair enough so he's keeping this formation pretty tight got his uh lead ships out there We'll see where Finch goes here. Finch is just stopping. So is Finch the end game piece as far as Matlock is concerned, or uh, as far as John's concerned? It could be really interesting to see what John does with green here. Uh, you figure like a, a three hard with the to ship right and the next turn would be beneficial if green survives this turn which is probable yeah and it looks like john's trying to open up several different lanes of attack here i mean that's kind of what john has to do given his list and what he's facing uh matlock's strength is in flying together in his formation keeping his list together if john can split his list up and get multiple attack vectors it's going to take him longer to whittle down matlock's list but it won't be at such a disadvantage as if he were to just joust it, it looks like we're gonna get our first shots of the game this is gonna be zz <clears throat> range three Range three, unobstructed, onto the brown Y-Wing, who is reinforced. So one, one max can go through. Here's the roll. 
Two crits. ZZ spends. And the Y Wing rolls and takes one. So that's one in on Brown early. So now, if you saw there, John modified one of his crits to a standard hit. That has to do with the baked in ability to Republic Y Wing that prevents it from, this is going to sound strange, but prevents it from taking a crit until it actually takes a crit. So unless he suffers two crits in one attack, a single crit will just be changed to a standard hit. I'm going to call in Will here, see if we can add him up. So here's Brown on to green for one. Merle will roll and he'll get an evade. So the question here, does Matlock want to joust Merle? Hello! Merle? What? Evade? Hey, folks, Will! We got, we got a real treat for you, folks. <laughs> the, the owner and proprietor of Iron Buffalo, the store in which this championship is the store championship for, Mr. William Waterhouse is joining us right now. Will, how are you doing? Hey, guys, how is everyone? We're doing everyone. great. We've got a great tournament going on here. Uh, we're in our last round before the cut. Oh, We've got yeah. a classic Nickel City matchup of John versus Matlock. And oh, we're happy geez. you can join us here, sir. Is Matlock, uh, is he still cheating? Um, we, to be determined. Okay. Um, I mean, let's, let's cut to the chase. The most important thing to me is, uh, did Reese show up? And is who's beating him? Because remember, if you beat Reese, you get a free coffee. I'll Reese have you know that Reese lost the first game on stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All is well in the world, then. <laughs> So, Will, we want to take a moment. Um, obviously, we know with everything going on in the world, uh, being a game shop owner right now is not the easiest thing. Uh, but, you know, take a moment to talk about Iron Buffalo. Uh, what, where are you guys located? What do you guys got going on right now? Um, let, us, let, us, let the people know more about you. Okay, great. Um, well, again, we're, we're Iron Buffalo Gaming and Coffee. Uh, we're a gaming shop with a coffee problem. And uh, what happened was a couple of years ago, I, I'm a former teacher and bartender at the whole other story. And I realized that there really was a, a need for a place in the area that didn't just look at the gaming community as retail. We needed a third space. We needed a place we could all get together and geek out. You know, and so I had this idea of creating uh, my man cave where anyone in the public could come hang out with me and play games and have a coffee with me. And that was kind of the basis of Iron Buffalo. It was a, a place for all of us to get together and hang out and to meet. And I've met some of the most amazing people through this community, which is why I try to keep this shop uh, very community-focused and very community-based. We do a lot of fundraising for people in the community that need help. We, uh, we you know, look out for each other, and we, we don't allow any negativity or... or bad talk or we try to stay away from politics and religion in here i mean unless you're talking about the empire because you know that's uh that's okay with me um but it, it really has become a place for people to get together and be yourselves and we pride ourselves on that and we're located here in amherst new york uh right in millersport highway down the street from duff's so yes we're hungry a lot um but we really pride ourselves in just being like the hangout for people of course, with COVID, we, uh, we're not allowing people in the building at the moment because we're very worried about the community. But as soon as we can again, I cannot wait to have the x community back in the shop. You guys, I would look forward to Tuesday, Thursdays constantly. You are like my uh, fun people I really look forward to dealing with. Well, we definitely appreciate that. I know all of us um, eagerly anticipate returning to the shop. Um, now, as far as if people wanted to to give you, throw some shekels and make purchases your way, uh, how can they go about doing that? Oh, you can sign up for my OnlyFans page at uh, 
No. no oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. This just got awkward. Uh, um, yeah, I know it. No, it's just me when you subscribe with a cup of coffee. Being, I'm so disappointed in you. Why would you sign up for this? Uh, <laughs> no, to be to be honest, we have uh, IronBuffaloGaming.com, and if you go to that website, our entire shop is online. All pre-orders are online. Uh, you can get some Iron Buffalo swag on there. And the best part about it is you can purchase uh, anything you want in our shop online and then pull up in the parking lot and I'll come out and I'll throw it in your car for you. Uh, so it's, you know, a curbside pickup. We keep everyone safe. But we are one of the only shops in the area that have rotated our entire shop online and pre-releases. So, uh, you know, be sure to check back there. We do give discounts for pre-release signups. And, you know, we love our X-Wing guys. You guys are amazing. Okay, great. Now, we do have some watchers and listeners who are from out of state. Do you ship purchases? I mean, it, it depends on the purchase, but I would not be against it because, uh, again, I just want people to get what they're looking for. <laughs> so so I get gotcha. excited as, as a gamer. If somebody really needs something and they find it with me, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll get it to you. Okay, great. Uh, Will? We appreciate you so much for stopping by and chatting with us for a moment. Um, we're, we're having a great store championship here, and hopefully the next one will be in Iron Buffalo proper. And oh, hell yeah. And I, I appreciate the... you guys. Carl, I appreciate you and I the community so much. Uh, please let me know who wins so we can uh, send a shout-out on all our social media to them. And then, you know, they get bragging rights and a free coffee next time I see them. And, uh, you know, thanks again, guys, and God bless the Empire. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Will do, sir. Will, thank you so much for stopping by. Have a oh, thank you. Always a pleasure. Good luck, guys. All right, that was William Waterrose, owner and proprietor of Iron Buffalo. Uh, Greg had to step away for a moment to heed the call of nature. Um, we were speaking to Will, so a little bit of the action went by the wayside here. Uh, but right now we can see that, you know, uh, looks just kind of looking at the board state here. Matlock took two shields off a red squadron bomber. We've got Merrill making an aggressive forward maneuver to Matlock. Matlock's not dropping any ba bombs, uh, bringing a nice banking move from the... Another Red Squadron bomber. And it's, it's going to roll for the strain. He is going to take a strain. It's like we said, folks, Matlock's dice. The worst thing that could possibly happen is probably what he's going to roll. Well, you know, sometimes you got it, sometimes you don't. And Matlock has it, whatever it is. <laughs> and there's Merle with the block. That's what Merle's there for. So I really like John's approach here uh, with Merle. He's going to take some shots that's unavoidable, but he's in a really good position that should Matlock decide to drop some bombs Merle's going to be in a good position to kind of get away from that then we've got uh, Finch and Tally coming in on the flank Finch Easy. does get the lock kind of hanging back a bit uh, my only problem with John's approach right now is that uh, Merle is doing his thing but like a turn too soon I can see that. I can see that. The ZZ focus boost here. That's going to put ZZ in a difficult position for the next round. I, I think, personally, if I'm John, what I'm doing is I'm coming in, getting a shot, and I'm five straighting away, hoping to bait those bombs out. Because once you drop, you got to keep dropping, right? Once you drop, the drop don't stop.
The new stream collaborator is the tournament organizer, Carl Duty, X-Wing Debrief. Hey, X-Wing Debrief. How's it going? 41st Battalion, thank you so much for the follow. So this is ZZ range one onto yellow. Spends for two. And ZZ will spend to get their focus back. One evade. So R2 takes a shield. And R2 will take a strain to get a target lock on ZZ. Tally now. Range three onto green. So that is going to be a two versus one shot because of the strain. Tally can feel free to spend for two hits. Green takes one. And that's what these aimings are going to have to do. They're just going to have to plink away. Finch gets a range three obstructed shot. Two of them, actually. That's hit, crit, crit coming in. One will change to a hit. And the roll, blank, blank, or blank, evade. Cloud turns one to evade, so green takes a shield. Veteran turret gunner will come back in, and same target. And Finch will spend his target lock. X-Wing Tavern Wars, what's up, buddy? Finch gets one. We'll need double eyeballs here. Almost, but the cloud will convert that one blank into an evade. And aside from Merle, that's the resistance shots. Let's see what these Y wings can do. So I don't think we'll see a launch from Finch here. No, I definitely don't... Need to... so this is going to be R two D two range one into ZZ. With a target lock and a calculate available. Who needs it though? Hit hit crit. We're talking about Matlock bad dice. Explain that, Carl. You know what? It, I can't. <laughs> ZZ and does it, take a shield. No shots for Brown. Blue, no shots because he's bumped onto Merle. That's why I'm saying like Merle got in there one round too early because they weren't able to focus on who Merle has bumped with the intimidation and his ability. Right. So we got a range one shot onto Merle. Only one. Merle rolls. Natty evades. Merle is just like, I'm Merle. You don't <laughs> I'm Merle. Are you Merle? No. Leave me alone. He's got another range one shot on Merle. Two Merle? hits. Natty evades again. <laughs> Merle. Merle! This is, this is what we're talking about with Matt Locke's dice. It's not always necessarily Matt Locke's dice that work bad for him, but his his curse can enhance his opponent's die as well. So Goji at range one. Let's see if he remembers the Merle trigger. Well, he's going to have to remember the Merle trigger because it's a must. Yeah, rolls a blank anyway, it doesn't matter. Goji takes one. And a strain for a target lock. 
from Goji. And we are at round. So no points scored, damage exchanged, nothing big. If I'm ZZ, I am fiving away from here. This is yeah, the danger I think zone. The, uh, the five to the barrel roll and to the boost. Because if I'm Matlock, I'm dropping bombs from yellow and red. I'm not sure. I don't think. Maybe we get a bomb drop from green. Let's try and catch Merle. Um, I probably not a launch from uh, from the da. Uh, sorry, I'm blanking out from Finch. Uh, possibly either a one bank to the right ship right for Finch, or maybe even a, a hard two right. Yeah, I, I think Finch is going to slow roll. Callie's in a little bit of a weird situation. So I think the two bank right where you kind of want to go is going to hit debris. Yeah, I think... I think may, maybe Tally just hard ones to the ship right. Just to kind of set her up for the turn after. Um, I think Malloc probably goes in on on Finch this round to try and burn Finch down. And then just kind of leaving those bombs in his wake so that those A-wings can't regroup on his backside. Yeah, here's the thing. If you're Matlock, you have to move fast enough where a trajectory simulator next turn doesn't hurt you. Right. Because if you're going one forward and Finch one banks, Trajectory Simulator into your face next turn. And also remember, with Finch's ability, he doesn't have to Trajectory Simulator a drop. He could just put it right in front of him. Yep, you can put it anywhere around him, too. There's no safe space when it comes to Finch, Dallow. So I think this might be a good turn for John to disengage and reset for another slash in because I think he's got the right strategy right now. Just plink away yep, while you can run. and don't don't take many shots if you can avoid it, you know? Yep, hit and run. Uh, ZZ definitely is not in a great place for getting any shots. Um, definitely needs to peel out with ZZ. Merle, probably a hard three ship left here. And it looks like we're going to get some bomb drops. Green will drop. Let's go overhead for the bomb drops, see what we see here. You had it out and then you closed it. Green drops and fuses it. Interesting. That is an interesting choice. I think with the odds of that getting Meryl, you want it going off this round. Or maybe he's trying to catch Tally in the next round with it. Yeah, maybe he's thinking they're not going to be aggressive this round, but I can cover my bat side next round. Red also drops. Concussion. And is he going to fuse that? I think you let that one go. Yeah, that gonna... one you definitely let go. Especially if he decides to go from yellow as well. If you're going to catch ZZ. Hold off on yellow. Yeah, I think if ZZ is... ZZ five forwards, barrel rolls and to boost should be able to avoid that bomb. So that's it for bombs there. Now we're going to go to Merle. Merle, two bank. And with the fact that that bomb is fused, he is able to focus rotate here if he would like. 
Yeah, I think that's a, a good call depending on a um, good percentage of thought of where Matlock's going with his ships. That sentence doesn't make any sense, but folks, it's been a long day and my brain's kind of fried. Mm-hmm. Green? Three bank. Coming in fast. And green will actually reload. So he doesn't want to be forced to drop more bombs, so he's reloading. Blue now. Too hard. You know, look. And blue will actually reinforce the front against Merle and possibly Tally here. Red, two hearts. With R4 that makes it blue. And he'll take a focus. Yellow. So Merle could be in trouble here. Brown also. So Merle is, uh, late targeted. Merle or possibly Tally, depending on what John did with Tally. But I think you're probably right. It's going to be Merle here. Slight danger of that bomb maybe getting the yellow Y wing. Finch doing that bank like we thought. Might be a great time for just a target lock on the green. That's what's gonna happen. Tally would be the next to move. So I do like the one bank from Finch because that puts Finch in a good position next turn for a one hard. I mean, granted, it's red and she won't get in action, but given the position that can put Finch in, that can be a real problem for Matt Locke. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And with Finch's ability to just drop bombs on him, the turn after we could see that concussion bomb finally unleashed. So ZZ the five straight. So definitely in range of that barrel, bomb right now. Barrel roll away, boost gives you a little comfort. And a boost. Takes a stress, but that's all right. Yep. So the bomb's not going to hit ZZ, but that's okay because it gets ZZ out of play for a turn. There's one more exactly. shot. Exactly. Great deterrence. And it doesn't even hit R2. Oh, shit. Hexile Gaming, thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate you guys coming by. We've got the Iron Buffalo Store Championship. This is round four. If John wins, he's in the cut. Nograth, what's up, man? How's it going? How was the uh, team tournament today? So Goji getting the bonus dice from his ability and he's range one of a device.
Cali rolls for one. Range three. Obstructed. Four of eight dies from the Y wing. Oh, oh the God, Matt locked. Yep, folks. Remember when we spoke about Matlock's dice? That's a prime example of classic Matlock dice right there. That actually hits the hole. Finch now has the range one banger here on the green. This is going to be a four dice primary attack. Hit crit. Spend the lock. Nargrath, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. So it stays hit crit. That crit goes down to a hit. The Y Wing does get the evade. So green shields down now, and a veteran turret gunner shot coming up from Finch. Only one again. Wiving rolls. And that's into the hull. So John just chipping away here, which is what he wants to do. Not going to get huge damage swings from this list but the list is doing exactly what it's built to do which is move fast chip away at your opponents and right now matlock's got a big block of one die one green die ships that are taking some hits Two hits into Merle. Merle takes a shield. This is going to be another range one into Merle. That's going to be hit crit into Merle. Merle rolls. Finds one evade. That is shields down on Merle. R2D2 now. Range one on Merle. <coughs> R2 will spend his calculate. Merle. Merle dies. Down goes Merle. R2-D2, Ace of Legend, takes out Merle. Not only does he take out Merle, he aces him. Aces him off the board. <clears throat> so this is a range two now, obstructed shot onto Finch through a cloud. And the roll for nothing. Merle got hurled. That's right. And that is the round, and we do have a scoring update. It's going rounds on G19 Atlock 30 behind. So taking Merle off the board there is obviously really good for Matlock. It gives him some much needed breathing room and drops the offensive efficiency of John's list considerably. Um, Matlock's got a bit of a problem here now with Finch, depending on where he wants to go. Tally, or I'm sorry, ZZ, 
He's going to be getting back into this fight this turn, probably too hard in. Uh, uh, Tally. Tally might back go ship left. Get that, keep that arc in the back. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. We're going to have to have some bomb drops from Matlock. Uh, who's dropping bombs from Matlock? I honestly, if you if I'm Matlock, uh, the only ship that has to drop a bomb, one of them has to, is Red. So Red oh. has to drop a bomb. Green reloaded, so he doesn't have to. And I don't think there's really any need to drop a bomb right here for anyone, except yeah, for Red, who has, has to. Yeah, require to by the way too cheap <clears throat> concussion bombs. Um, there's, like you said, there's not a need for it. Right, I agree. Concussion bombs are way too expensive. One point, yeah, Max. I mean, if, you, if you just look at what Matlock can fit in his list here, um, it's just, it's crazy. These, these bombs need to be more expensive. Lord of Britannia, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you guys joining us. And hey, if you're looking for yet another Discord to join, why not join ours? Exclamation point Discord in the chat. It's going to be interesting to me to see if Finch decides to drop a concussion here. So Matlock says he's going to drop a bunch of thoughts here. It's interesting to me. So green will drop a bomb. I wonder if Don't this is going to be... Also, we fused. also have that bomb that had the delayed fuse on it last yep. round. I wonder if this is going to get fused as well. I don't think so. He might be trying to catch Finch. I think that's... Well, he does decide to delay fuse it. I think... I don't think you really want to delay fuse that one because you probably catch Finch with it. Regardless, unless Finch does a zero stop, um, probably catch him with that. So Red has to drop a bomb, so Red will drop a bomb. That's Goji. Goji does have delayed fuses as well. And Goji will fuse it. And since Merle's off the board, these Y-Wings are now the first to act. I will tell you this, Greg. If John loses this match, I don't think he's going to be that upset. Because if there's one thing in all of Star Wars... That John loves its Y wings, <laughs> but but Republic Y wings. He likes any type of Y wing. Rebel, oh, scum, Republic. The man is a fan of the Y. So Finch is gonna drop a concussion bomb as well, and he's gonna do it using Finch's ability to touch himself. <laughs> oh man, that didn't. <laughs> Gonna use it for Finch's ability, which will remain unnamed. <clears throat> and there it is. So the Y Wings. <laughs> I know, Deslin. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I drop a bomb on you, I touch, touch myself. myself. And that's gonna catch Green. So good job by uh, Finchy there. Yeah, no reason to barrel roll. You're going to take it. But hey, going to go for the block and try to make Finch taste a little bit of his own medicine. And ooh, a turn in onto kind of where Zizi's going to be.
Yellow tries the three bank bumps. So Matlock at this point is bombing himself almost exclusively. Matlock will rotate arc into Finch. And that clears. So with that move, I don't see Finch avoiding a bump here. Yeah, no. Finch is taking. Unless he did it hard too. No, there's nope. a bump. Finch tried the hard two, but uh, it didn't go so well. Tally, let's see what direction Tally went. She did go hard to left and call their call. She just grabs a focus. No real reason to do anything else. And ZZ. Hard two to the left. Does she barrel roll and just kind of say no shots today, sir? Um, I don't necessarily think so. Because then, well, maybe. We'll see. And yeah, she just focuses. Like... She stays there, focuses. Yeah, I think with ZZ, you can kind of put her in harm's way a little more than you regularly would with a resistance A-Wing because of her ability. So red and yellow take a damage here under the shields. And we'll have to decide between a stress and uh, to restrain and a uh, thing. Uh, I think this fuse is off from last round, too. I have guess it's a tournament, baby. Hashtag free Howl Runner, baby. Let's go. No Howl Runner. We don't want no Howl Runner. Get Howl Runner out of here. Okay. All right. So Green and Finch take one. Green will take a strain. Let's see if Finch decides to take a strain, which he probably should. And he will. Catherine, three and one. Nice work. Tally's got range three. Choice of targets. Hold on a second. Hey guys, I'm sorry, real fast. This this bomb that was there was a bomb from last round that was fused, right? And they were both fused? Okay. Tally, range three on the Goji. Mega Silver, what's up, man? How you doing? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. And Tally's that's an optics. Focus on that optics. My shield's down on Goji. Chip, 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 chip. He's got range two choice targets. Probably going to Goji. Zizi spends and she takes her token back. There's the one evade. Goji down to three. Oh. The Blaine Train, thank you so much for the follow. And Dr. Weston, thank you so much for the gifted sub to Mega Silver. Appreciate you. So this is now Finch on the brown, range one. Four dice primary. Four, two. 
Brown will take it. Same target from veteran turret gunner now. And that's Natty's. Hit, hit, hit. The crit goes to a hit. Because of plated hull. And it's going through. And that's an initiative kill on the brown Y-Wing. So, Carl, I think we're seeing the tides start to turn. These Y-Wings are losing integrity fast. They are losing integrity. We do only have roughly over 20 minutes left in this round. So, the question is, does John still have enough time to get the job done? And what what is Matlock going to do to kind of keep, keep a points lead here? Dragon King 90, thank you so much for the follow. That's hit crit onto ZZ from Goji. ZZ has a focus to spend. Takes nothing. No dorsal turret available for yellow. And no shot for green. So we're back to dials here. We got a scoring update. Score is now time to eat. Thanks, Gerg. I think so Gerg might want to gargle a lozenge or something because it sounded like he said that Matlock only scored nine points. 39, but you know. Gerg has his own unique way of dealing with stuff. So what does what does Matlock have to do to get back in this match, Carl? Right now, I think Matlock with blue and green need to focus on Finch. With only the one they die, he's going to be able to push that damage through. Um, I'm not really sure. As far as with like... Uh, Goji and R2. Shooting it at ZZ just feels bad because it's so hard to get damage through. He's in a good position with them to just kind of slow roll them a bit and decide what he wants to do to regroup. Um, but right now, I think first and foremost, he's really got to burn down Finch. That's as far as just like trying to get points, that's where John's got the bulk of his points, and Matlock does not have a lot of time. And now that his ships are a little bit spread out, it's going to be really hard to focus fire. Weaver CT, thank you so much for the follow. I think you, I think Matlock should probably K turn with Goji. Maybe even, mm, I don't know if a K-turn, K-turn would probably fit with R2. Okay. Yeah, I think that probably fits. A little more risky than you like, but probably fits. Tally, maybe a one hard ship left into a barrel roll rotate. Taking Brown off the board really helped John for Finch with Finch's options. I think anywhere Finch goes, though, uh, he's eating a bomb. Finch also has to drop this turn. I think Finch John's has to drop. Bet. Green has to drop. Yeah, and I, I believe John, Red has to drop. Yeah, I think John's best bet with Finch is to place it touching his base. Uh, the lower left-hand corner of the base ship left. Um, that gives them the best chance to catch both blue and green. 
So he will have to touch himself again this turn to try and get a bomb off. Kind of crazy. We are not in system phase yet. Matlock has the first drops. So the question is, if Finch touches himself with a bomb, will it have the desired outcome as opposed to not touching himself? Yes. Yellow is going to think about dropping a bomb. Yellow won't fuse that one. Who's thinking about dropping here? And green will be required to drop a bomb. So many bombs. Finch dropping it bottom left. He's touching himself. Still touching himself. Finch is in a terrible spot right now. Like a, a like a bank maneuver could end up just you know doing havoc on him. Anything less than a hard two to ship left for Finch is bad. I think hard to your left is the only way Finch avoids mega damage bombs. here. Yeah. Yeah. And we're ready to move finally after forty any, bombs. Any other any other directions? Finch is eating two bombs. Doji with the two hard that clears, and we'll take a focus. R2-D2, one forward, clears one of his strings, turns the arc, that is such a dangerous move. But it does block the two hard and makes whatever Finch does pretty. And he's going to rotate his arc to the right. A right turn and a focus. Finch now. Oof. That's going to be three bombs. Yeah. And Finch, a gas cloud. Finch not feeling good. So there's the first strain token from Finch. Finch could potentially die without losing a shield if he keeps running into bombs. I don't know if there's enough bombs left for this. Halley focus, and then you got to assume there's going to be a boost involved. Yep, solid boost there. She's in a good position. And ZZ 
Probably just focus rotate at this point. Yeah. We do have our first result in from the fourth round. Ben beats um, 200 to 102. We've seen them both on stream today. Ben was the first order and Tom was scum. So Finch takes one and another strain. Next bomb. Finch takes one. And also takes a strain. And then Green and Finch both take one, and I'm guessing a strain. So Finch sitting with four strains. Oh, we have another result too. Reese, who we saw earlier with Lando. He wins 200 to Jason's 57. Reese stole my pick to win the tournament. He's flying like he has something to prove. So ZZ gets the first shot. So ZZ, three dice. On to Goji here. Just gonna casually hit, hit crit. And spends it for his focus. Goji does get the invade. And those are two hits. Plated hull. These Republic Wise are so resilient because of that plate at Hall. Yep. Uh, ben was the Kylo first order. Kylo taps it. Here's Tally now. Spends for two. Blue rolls. And that is going through. That shields down onto blue. Goji obstructed range three from Finch here. Or two. Goji rolls, gets two, and a cloud conversion three. Veteran turret gun is going to take another crack at it for one. Goji, literally, there's no combination that doesn't get evaded here. Since Goji had a focus. And now the Y-Wings will get the chance to shoot. Goji, range one onto ZZ. Three versus three. That's going to be three hits. ZZ rolls. And in easy three evades. So hard to hit ZZ. R2, range two obstructed. So this is two versus four. Hit crit. Oh, and that's a crit going through, and that's shields, and that's half points on ZZ Call. That's a, a big swing for Matlock. Uh, anytime you can rack up some points on ZZ is a big accomplishment. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
Range one on the tally. Three versus three. Ooh, hit, crit, crit coming into tally. Tally doesn't have a mod here. Tally takes half. This game's getting getting down to it. We got roughly 10 minutes left. Carl, would oh, you believe me? Would you believe me, Carl, if I told you that Matlock just took the lead? No, because it's common knowledge you are a liar. That's true. But Matlock yes. is in the lead. This is two versus four. Two versus four, range three on Zizi. And for one, Zizi just needs to find one squiggle and finds it. Back two dials. So let's see all who has to drop. Green has to drop a concussion bomb. Finch has to drop a concussion as Finch well. Finch has to drop a concussion. Red has to drop a concussion. Nope, red's out of concussions. Yellow has to drop a concussion. So R2 has to drop. Green has to drop. And Finch has to drop. We've got nine and a half minutes left. Scores o'clock 83. I'll get you. So Matlock is, I mean, believe it or not, in control of this game. It's That round was just an incredible swing. But let me ask you, Greg, in your opinion right now, given the current board state, who has, who's in better position to push through damage on this next turn. Uh, I mean, it's always A-Wings because <laughs> they get the arcs, but like R2's pointed the wrong direction. So if he wants a shot, he has to either go forward, rotate to try to get a shot on Finch. But again, the, the dorsal is not... The dorsal is only range two, so R2 probably is not getting a shot this turn. Blue so, can try and too hard to get a shot, but maybe not. Ah, I don't see Matlock getting too much off. Green has to drop. So if Green hard twos to ship right after the drop, let's try and block Finch in, and then gets rotates the arc to ship left to maybe get a shot on Tally. Um, so here's the I drop that, from Green. I think that's probably the, the prime decision uh, for for green. Red, just keep chasing Tally. Yeah, R2 drops and goes ahead and fuses that bomb. And Finch has to drop his last bomb. And it's going to be a trajectory simulator launch here. Is that maybe a sign that Finch is going to too hard to the right? And it looks like we're ready for movement. Let's get these Y wings on the road. Here's the thing, Carl, with this many ships to move and shots, could this be the last round of play? It's very possible. And actually, Greg, I hate to do this because I want to see how this turns out, but I got to jump off here and start entering some scores in, okay? All right, man. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you for having me. All right. See you later. All right. So R2, too hard, takes calculate. And 
And let's see where green ends up. There is the two heart. Oof. Oof. I think green's gonna die. And Matlock might just... Oh, green. Malak is gonna kill himself and give the game away. And he's just gonna barrel roll in into the death a little more. Finch now, too hard. To the right. He's gonna look for a fifth strain. Doesn't take a strain. You should have seen it when you when you were almost rolling it on the mat. The stream the stream chat was just like John, how embarrassing. Tally now gonna make a move. So just go for a target lock because there ain't a lot much else for her to do here. As blue. It's easy now. Two harding to the left. Unconventional, but not disappointing. We'll take a focus. And that'll be that. And now these bombs are going to go off. And I expect green to die. Green takes a bomb. Green takes another, and that is the end of green, and the lead swings back to John. The last bomb goes off, and it doesn't hit anyone. No green, I expect you to die. So Zizi's going to take a range one onto Goji now and just needs to get one through. And that's going to be three and can guarantee the kill. And Zizi's. Then Goji rolls the disrespect evade as Goji blows up. Finch will look for a shot, but it's got to be out of range. And R2, no shot. We're back to dials with two and a half minutes left. But for all intents and purposes, this one is over. Dawn takes a 116 to Thanks, Garrick. It's not over till the clock says it's over, or the math just doesn't work out in your favor. You know ZZ's doing a one or two hard. I guess could do a three, so. You really just need to bank with R2. You could fly off the board. That's a power move. I hear all the cool kids are doing it. So after this match, 
we're gonna do the cut we're gonna have a 30 minute dinner break and then get into our top four cut we are declaring a store champion today that's happening this is the iron buffalo store championship a rare ffg first order tournament kit is on the line amongst other prizes and all the glory in the world r2 is going to drop a bomb because r2 has to and he's going to fuse it r2 three banks And R2 will barrel roll left. I don't remember when store champs were in intimate affair because I really wasn't that into it last store championship. And then this one was canceled for 5,000 months. Finch, just a one forward. As time will be called here. Will Hagwood with the raid. Thank you so much, Will. Hope your stream went well. It's been 84 years since we've had a store championship. Callie coming around. There's really no need to engage. She'll boost and rotate. Bazizi's been dead for 30 years. And Zizi will focus, rotate, try to get a few more points in. On, oh, forgot to give you the cam there. Bomb goes off. It ain't gonna hit anybody. And now ZZ and Tally will get to shoot. Tally now range three. I do declare this has been a great tourney. No hits there. I came to California for the credits. So R2 now range one. Easy. That's hit, hit, crit. That goes down to three hits. And with the strain, that's another half point on R2. If MOV matters in this tournament, that could be a big pickup of points there. 21 extra. R2 will take a strain to get target lock. NJX WTO. Thank you so much for the follow. R2. Okay, it's going to spend the target lock. And it's going to stay one hit. And ZZ evades easily. And that is the game. GG's.
I have the score as John 137, Matlock 83. Hi, Jen. All right, everybody. We are, we have a half hour break here for meal and then the top cut in the Iron Buffalo Store Championship. I'm going to leave the stream running so you can collect some nickels for betting. Speaking of betting, let's pay out those bets. <laughs> 